You may have seen my unboxing video of the Super Nintendo Classic Mini, and after playing with it for a little while I have to say I'm pretty happy with it. But you see there is a little bit of an issue. The games that came with it originally weren't really my cup of tea. Now don't get me wrong, there's some great games on there, but key favourites like Kirby's Dream Land 3, Aladdin, uh, The Lion King, Mario Picross, Super Bomberman, and Turtles in Time are all noticeably missing. I understand why most of them are third party titles that would have cost Nintendo more money in licensing to get them onto the system, but that doesn't really matter, because you are of course able to hack the console to add games that you prefer. Now you may say, what's the point, when you can just get a retro pie, but it's not quite the same. Just having a proper Super Nintendo controller alone, rather than a third party USB one, makes a big difference. So I'm going to show you how to hack your Super Nintendo Mini and turn it into the nostalgia box you deserve. Now I'm going to be using the latest version of HackChi, and this process should work on the NES Classic Mini as well. First of all you're going to need to download HackChi onto a Windows PC. For obvious reasons I can't actually tell you where to download it, but if you search around for it it's not that hard to get your hands on. Now the first time you open up the software you'll be asked to select which console you have, but of course you can always switch back and forth between the NES or Super Nintendo Mini as well as the Japanese versions as well by clicking up here. When you plug in your Super Nintendo you'll be asked to dump your original kernel and install a driver. Now this can be done at the start or just as you're about to install your games, but the dumping of the original kernel means that you can always return to the original factory settings if you prefer that. You'll be given instructions on what to do, such as holding down the reset button while turning the console on, but it's worth noting that this doesn't always work. If you keep getting a command prompt saying that the NES Mini can't be found, you may need to disable signed driver enforcement, which is a lot less complicated than it sounds. Just pause the video and follow these instructions. Follow the on-screen instructions to install the driver, and if it doesn't prompt you to dump your kernel, you can always find the option up here. As I say, this will allow you to reset your console back to factory settings if you want to, and you can do this after you've added games to the program, but it's an important step to get out of the way. Once all this has been done, you can start adding your ROMs. Once again, I can't actually tell you where to find ROMs, and legally speaking I need to reiterate that you should only use legally obtained ROMs from games that you actually own. The system will actually play all regions of games, but I try to stick to the US versions as that's the ones that they use on the system as standard. Once loaded into the program, you'll have a few options like selecting whether it's a one or two player game, editing some of the titles, and you can also add cover art. You can either load it from a file that you have or do a custom Google search from within the app. Once that's finished, you can plug the Super Nintendo Classic Mini into the computer and click to transfer the files to the console. Once all that is done, the Super Nintendo will restart and your games will be loaded. You'll notice that on here they've been placed into folders based on alphabetical order. You are able to change this, you can have the original games separated off, or you can add different subfolders if you want to, or you can just have all the games in one folder. With the space on the system you won't be able to fit the entire library of games, but you could fit maybe two to three hundred depending on your choices. To test out how they play we can go to, say, Aladdin, and once it's loaded of course, you'll see that it plays as you'd expect, and it will also have a suspend point as if it was one of the original games on the system. Now this isn't going to be for everyone, and there are reasons to keep the system stock, but if you do want to hack it then I hope this video helps and you can get playing some of your favourite games on both the NES and the Super Nintendo Classic Mini. Until next time guys, I'll see you later.